Paolo Bancaro is one of the top upcoming superstars. It didn't take long for him to reach stardom after getting drafted first overall back in 2022. He averaged 20 points per game in his first season and took home the Rookie of the Year award. In his second year, he got even better, making the first all-star game of his career and leading the Magic to their first playoffs in four years. So far in his third year, it looks like Paolo has brought his game to an even higher level. He's raised his scoring from 22 points per game last season to 29 a game so far this year. His best performance so far has been against the Pacers, where he not only dropped a career-high 50 points, but was also just one assist shy from a triple-double. Despite Paolo's incredible production, he's flown completely under the radar. So far, Paolo has only one nationally televised game in his career. While other young superstars like Anthony Edwards and Luka Doncic get plenty of spotlight, Paolo Bencaro has been overlooked. The mainstream media may not be giving Paolo the attention he deserves, but here on More Hoops, we're going to break down why Paolo is a rising superstar. But first, we gotta discuss BetUS. Guys, if you love the NBA, then you should consider joining BetUS, because it makes the games even more fun to watch. You could bet on games, and if you're correct, you could cash out. With Paolo playing at an MVP level, the Magic are a hard team to beat, so I'm going to bet on the Magic beating the Cavs in their next game. If you sign up, use the code YouTube150 for a 150% sign up bonus on the first deposit and 125% on the second and third deposits of up to $2,000. Now back to Paolo. Most of his scoring comes inside the paint, and he's able to get there at will thanks to his quick first step and impressive handle. Watch on this play how he crosses up Patrick Williams, gets all the way to the rim, and then finishes strong. Again, Paolo isolates from up top. He's able to beat Williams with another in and out crossover. Vucevic tries to step this up, but Paolo just extends and finishes over the big man. Paolo is also strong as hell, and he knows how to use it to score when driving to the basket. He'll often bump defenders, which gets them out of the way, allowing him to finish. On this drive, Paolo just bulldozes through Highsmith and then finishes with the reverse layup. Wagner screens topping off of Paolo, allowing him to get downhill. And Isaiah Jackson tries to stay in front, but Paolo moves him like a ragdoll and finishes with the two-handed jam. Paolo driving to the basket is like a moving truck going towards you. If you don't get out the way, you're going to get mowed down. He's also got nice footwork. On this play, he screens for Suggs and rolls to the basket, and then steps through Siakam and finishes with the floater. He's also got a really deadly spin move. Paolo brings it up in transition, drives right, gets around Giddy with the spin move, then finishes with the and one. He's also able to get a lot of easy buckets through post-ups. On this play, Paolo has his man pinned, so Franz feeds him the entry pass, and all Paolo has to do is catch it, go straight up, and finish. This time, Paolo wants to post up Josh Giddy. Giddy gambles and goes for the steal, but it doesn't pay off, and Paolo knocks down the open baseline jumper. His dominance on the inside leads to him getting hacked a lot and many trips to the free throw line. He's taking 12 foul shots per game, the second most in the NBA, but he has to improve as a free throw shooter as he's only shooting 64% from the foul line this season. Paolo's inside game is enough to handle, but he's also a great mid-range scorer. If given too much space, or if he catches the defender with his hands down, it's man down, and he's got moves like step backs to create separation to get his shot off. He's also a legit shooter from deep, so he won't hesitate to shoot if left open. Defenders that go under screens are quickly punished with pull-up threes, and he's a tough shot maker. A lot of his makes are well defended, but at 6'10 and with that high release point, he can shoot over the top of defenders and knock it down pretty easily. The fact that Paolo is such a deadly scorer from inside and out makes him extremely tough to guard. There's nowhere on the court you can force him where he can't get a bucket. Because Paolo is such a great scorer, this often leads to him getting double teamed, which leads to his teammates getting open. On this play, Paolo catches it in the post, and the Nets double team him. Great cut by Wendell Carter Jr., and Paolo finds him for the alley-oop. The Pacers double team Paolo from up top, and he finds KCP in the corner, who makes the extra pass to Wendell, who gets another dunk. And he could get fancy with his passes. 
The Pacers collapse on Paolo and he makes the behind the back pass to Suggs. Suggs could have easily shot this, but he makes the extra pass to Anthony Black who drains it from the corner. The constant pressure that Paolo puts on the rim of his driving forces defenses into rotation and creates plenty of assist opportunities. Here Paolo catches it in the post, immediately attacks off the catch. Ben Simmons has to step that up, leading to Mo Wagner getting the open corner three. And along with doing a great job at setting up his teammates, Paolo is also doing a much better job at taking care of the ball. Last season, he was coughing it up way too much, but this season, Paolo is turning it over way less. And Paolo doesn't just dominate on offense and get lazy on defense. He's a legit two-way player. He slides his feet extremely well. On this play, Jovic tries to drive by him, but Paolo is able to keep him in front, forcing him to pass it out, and the only thing that he can get is this tough step back three which misses. He can also more than hold his own when he has to defend a quick point guard. On this play, Paolo switches onto Terry Rozier. Rozier tries to break him down, but Paolo stays in front and he forces him into another tough step back. His size and strength helps him to overwhelm post-ups. Siakam tries to back him down, but Paolo stands his ground and he blocks this fadeaway. He can also make defensive plays as a help defender. Tyler Hero catches this handoff, gets to the basket, but Paolo challenges this layup, forcing him to airball. He'll even risk getting dunked on. Halley and Turner get into some two-man game. Turner catches it on the roll. He looks to throw it down, but Paolo goes straight up, which forces him to miss this dunk. There isn't much that Paolo can't do on a basketball court. So there you have it, guys. That's how Paolo is turning into a superstar early into his third season. He's an incredible scorer that can score on all three levels, he's a terrific playmaker, and he's also an excellent defender, not just as a man-to-man -man defender, but also as a help defender. But now I want to hear from you guys, what do you think of how Paolo Bancaro has been playing this season? Do you think he can lead the Magic to a top four seed in the East? Do you think he can lead them to a deep playoff run? Let me see your thoughts down below in the comment section. Guys, I'm going to continue to talk about the Orlando Magic on this channel. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I hope to catch you all next video.